Good morning, good morning. Another lovely day in Perth. Oh, hello. Oh, hang on a minute. There's a van down there. Parked up outside my house. I wonder what he's doing. It's a rather swarthy workman with a notepad. Have to be careful because there's a water main on my property and they come along, dig it up and leave bloody great holes that I could literally fall into. I mean, completely six foot deep holes under the grass you could just go straight down into. He's wandering around doing it. Anyway, look, might be a very short video today. Going to get him a haircut, all right? So if I think of anything to talk about, I will. If not, I'll, uh, you know, you can have a quick look at my hair and then that'll be it. All right, all right, bye. All right, change of plans. Oh, I've left it too late to get my hair cut. Before the first patient's due. It became immediately apparent to me. Oh, no, got no petrol. Look, that's it. I'm never going to get to the hairdressers, huh? Come on. Actually, I prefer to be... I'd, I'd like to get out in front of a lorry, but I'd actually prefer to be behind cars because I don't exactly drive like a speed demon when I'm talking and cars behind me pile up a bit sometimes. So let him go, let him go. Have you paid the PRS PPL? No, don't, don't do it, don't do it. Don't know what that bloke is doing up the road. Oh, because I drove back past him because I changed my mind. Went in a different direction and uh, he's doing some measurements. Nothing good can come of it, you mark my words. When some bloke from the council's out with a clipboard around near where you live, you're, that's it. Something bad's going to happen. It's going to be a pedestrian crossing or traffic lights or airport or something. It's like those little rubber things they put across the road, isn't it? You know, the, the two rubber strips, parallel rubber strips, they put them across the road. And they are, um, they're not speed traps, but they are designed to measure the traffic volume and speed. They measure the... Uh, the number of uh, times that people drive across them gets measured and also the difference in in uh, and in the gap means that they can measure how fast it is so you know as soon as you as soon as they go down you know that the speed limit in that area is going to be reduced because they don't go down until unless they're doing a study because if they want to reduce the speed limit somewhere they won't do it without producing a study and the study always finds that the speed limit needs to be reduced and so as soon as those rubber lines go down you know that the speed you know the old speed limit signs are going to go up about six months later anyway how are you all right everything going well we did a survey yesterday you know i said we were really quiet in may and everyone was, you know, oh, you know, we've got no patients booked in, etc., etc. And then people start saying things, don't they? Like, oh, well, it was quiet last, don't, you know, let's not forget it was quiet last May, and May's traditionally a quiet month. And um, there's a sort of a confirmation bias if you start talking to people and saying things like that. They don't say, no, no, you're talking a load of baloney. They say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they want to agree with you don't they? they want to get on with you they want to be pleasant you know what's the point of creating conflict and starting an argument it's easier just to agree you know even if you don't even know in fact if you don't know you might as well agree because they might be right so uh, anyway but not old angry i'm i'm data driven me so i decided to sit down and try and work out whether may is a quiet month um, a bit more, I mean I'm a bit more data driven to do it because obviously I've only had the practice since November 2015 so we've only had two Mays and that's the last one and this one and this one we haven't even finished yet so I, <laughs> I'm sort of you know my old practice where I've been for 20 years I was I was like you know I knew whether a month was a quiet month or not because I'd had 20 of them Whereas my new practice, I, I can't remember. In fact, I remember obviously the first six months after I bought the practice, I remember them being very quiet. I mean, as in graveyard quiet. As in whole days and half days when we had no patients booked in at all. And no new patients at all. 
and that was the time when you know a lot of patients left and, and ran off with my uh, well my former my, my the former principal's former associate um, so they were tough but you know we got through them anyway uh, it turns out that uh, we are up year on year we're up about 75 percent in terms of patient numbers now the patient numbers in the surgery are not massive so let's say for example we might have like 75 patients coming in a month I don't know yeah that's why I did say 75 yeah 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 so your you know when when I worked on the health service we used to see 40 patients a day <laughs> so it's not unusual to see 75 patients in two days not an entire month uh, and it's just a different world you know I mean We've got one one patient coming in this week who may be spending, well, we know he definitely is spending 26,000. 26, and we've got another patient who will probably come in this month. At the moment, we're finalizing a treatment plan. I've just done that, and that's 20,000. So, you know, it's a different world. You know what I mean? It's like, so don't sort of get aerated. If you're on the health service and you start, you hear me saying figures like, oh, you know, we're, <laughs> I'm pleased because we got 10 more patients. But it's basically having a look back at it, which and we can only compare sort of really January, February, March, April uh, so far. Uh, and we're up about, as I say, about 75%. But that, that means like in a month where we had 53 patients last year, we might have had 75 this year. Or if we had 75 last year, we got 110. And then some, some uh, and then of course Easter was in a different month last year. so. Easter made March look bad last month, uh, last year, and Easter's made April look bad this year. So, uh, but it's all sort of bit, you know, it's all back of the fag packet type stats. But it turns out that May isn't isn't particularly uh, lack lack, you know, uh, slow month. Um, January, February, March tend to be the slowest three months of our year, and um, June, July. September, October, November tend to be the busy ones. So we're literally coming up into what's historically, and I say historically, based on based on a data set of one, <laughs> is our busiest month, which is June. So just to let you know, if you can benefit from my research, then you might want to carry out your own research. Uh, you know, it will certainly help you with um, holiday planning and stuff like that. Talking of which, you know, we had a staff meeting yesterday and holiday planning was one of the things that uh, came up. So we are increasingly trying to plan more and more into the future. There's no reason why you shouldn't plan about a year in advance, you know. Um, the best time to plan, for example, uh, for uh, next Easter is, is just after this Easter, isn't it? Because you, you learn the lessons of you know how you could do it differently and better. Um, we don't. I mean, staff meetings as a subject actually is is quite interesting because we don't necessarily have a formal structure. You know, I have I sort of adopt this sort of teleocratic management structure, which is management by shared purpose, whereby the practices the three objectives are to do good quality dentistry, make money, and have fun. Not necessarily in that order always, you know. Long, but but everything that we do has to be directed towards those three or two of those three or, or at least one of those three and um, that's the idea is really so that I can have a hands-off management style so I can say to the staff you know look please don't because I, I am busy at the top level you know uh, drinking coffee and stuff I can't be them, have them asking me can I order this should I order that you know should I see if I can get some cheaper gloves etc etc if it's if it's working towards my teleocratic objectives then I say like F off and leave me you know to deal with the higher functions of uh, of uh, management such as browsing YouTube and stuff like that so, talking of which YouTube's got a ton of stuff on now I tell you if you're interested in learning anything like implants or anything then then look at YouTube and especially get yourself a Google Chromecast which is a cheap little dongle it's a cost about 30 quid you can plug it into any telly that's got a spare HDMI port and it means that you can then broadcast you you can 
you can sort of sling anything from your phone or your laptop or any Chrome, Google Chrome browser or YouTube or anything onto that television. So if you're having a staff meeting and you're saying like as we have, we've got this implant patient coming in, we wanted them to see a YouTube video which sort of outlined the procedure. And uh, we were able after a little bit of fiddling about, because it's all done on your Wi-Fi network, to get the telly on the Wi-Fi or the Chromecast on the Wi-Fi and the laptop. And uh, so instead of everyone crowding around a laptop or a mobile phone or something watching it, you can watch it on a decent sized telly. But uh, yeah, so staff meetings, we don't, you know, we, we sort of um, have staff meetings rarely and then only because we need to discuss some or disseminate some information that's come in centrally that perhaps, you know, uh, we need to discuss as a group. And that might be like quarterly management accounts or something like that, or a, a big uh, implant case, or, um, you know, the, the social calendar. Social calendar, I think, is very important. We've got uh, the guy, the bloke next door, uh, he's a local, uh, he's an actor, you know, in the local. We support the local Moncton actors and uh, go and see their productions, and that's a sort of a local thing. So, uh, whenever they put a play on, we organise an evening to go and see them, and then this time we're going to go and we're going to go out for a meal beforehand as a practice so that's nice then we're going to you know someone suggested ladies day or epsom derby or something like that so we take a day off and we go on the coach to on a, it's an organized trip it's dead easy meet at the coach assembly point get on the coach they drive us there we have a drink we have a laugh we have a bet we come back they drop us off by which time we're sober we drove home uh what else are we doing Guy Fawkes night, always invite everybody around to my place, Guy Fawkes, because we have a bonfire. Uh, we have a summer barbecue, uh, which again is an outdoor event, and uh, get the old barbecue going, and everyone who comes around, and if the weather's nice, that tends to sort of last quite late into the evening. Um, the place where we are, the Marlow Innovation Centre, they've got a go-karting event coming up, all, all for charity, so the surgery's put together a go-karting endurance team, the Crazy Cavities, and we're going to go and drive go-karts around in circles for eight hours or until we get giddy, whichever comes first. Uh, what else are we doing? I mean, I think uh, there's probably a few other bits and bobs as well, but but as you can see, like the social side of things, that's the having fun side, you know? This is what, um, how can I put it? I mean, you know, I, a lot of dentists will probably see this as a loss why would they you know I mean to take your to take no, it's one two three four five staff out from ill plus yourself you're looking at 50 pound a head so you're you know you're looking 300 quid well you know the staff are not brilliantly paid I've got to say they're not paid a massive amount and to be honest with you I'd rather spend 300 quid on taking them out for a meal on a one-off basis than giving someone a 300 pound a year pay rise which then has to be given to all of them and it then you know and then the concomitant net tax and national insurance the whole thing starts to get extremely expensive doesn't it so and also i think that your, your loyalty and your compliance from the staff is incredibly uh, improved if they're happy in their work you know if they if and the sort of the test is to look back and say you know are they going to say in 10 years time or 15 years time perhaps long after they've left the practice do you know what you know do you remember working for old Watty, old angry you know didn't we had a laugh didn't we we did have a laugh in that job you know i mean that was it he wasn't you know he wasn't anal about if we needed to have a bit of time off for a hospital appointment or something or the daughters had an interview in a university and we wanted to go up and just have a look around the university with her or one of the myriad other examples of where staff would rather not have a job and rather just be like <laughs> you know on that day they want to be unemployed just for one day so they can just do something and okay so you're working around it 
we had a particular problem with the holidays in August in that uh, I, you know, I, they, they have six weeks off and, uh, you know, which is, I think, it, on the hindsight, is a bit generous. I think probably five weeks is, is probably mm, the sweet spot in terms of holidays. And I know a lot of surgeries only give the statutory minimum or they give four weeks. Uh, and it is it's quite difficult, I think, to justify four, but difficult to pay for six or schedule around six. You have to have a certain number of staff. And the way we used to do it when it was four was it was a week at Easter, a week between Christmas and New Year, and then two weeks in August. And then uh, when we put it up to six, it then, you know, they started disappearing <laughs> at the time. And it got very difficult because <clears throat> we're still only one receptionist, two nurses, basically. Two dentists and a hygienist. And we all have to be here for the surgery to work. It's very difficult for the surgery to work if any one of them is missing. Probably one of the nurses could go missing, providing the other nurse didn't mind running around. You know, nursing possibly for two dentists, but uh, when the receptionist's gone, then you, you might have two nurses, but one of them's got to be available to answer the phone whenever it rings. So we've got this stupid situation where, uh, well, we said, you know, the two, the weeks of Easter and Christmas were fixed, but the weeks in the summer were variable. And I used to say to them, like, you know, you can take your holiday when, two of the weeks you can take when you like, pretty much. And that's because, obviously, they've all got children or they don't have children of varying ages. And so they need a bit of flexibility in terms of, are they gonna take time off during the holidays or, are they going to get permission to take their kids out of school, perhaps keep the cost of the holiday down, etc., etc.? But we, we had a situation where, and I mean, you can probably gather from this that I've left this all, I've delegated all this. This is, this is, in a way, it's the weakness, but also the strength of the teleocratic management style. In that I've said to them, like, you know, organise your holidays. You know, you're all adults. You should know when you want to go. And what that happened was the receptionist had organised three weeks off or two and a bit weeks off at the beginning of August and the uh, two nurses had organised the last two weeks of August off and it was decided that I would be off those two weeks as well. That would be my two weeks because I said I didn't mind what two weeks I had because uh, I'm possibly going to be off uh, in September anyway another time. So, but looking at it with a little bit of conceptualization of what was going to happen you know because you have like your disaster hairs on the back of your neck just start pricking up when you look at this schedule and you think okay we're going to have like two and a bit weeks at the beginning of August with no receptionist so that means nobody to answer the phone so that means a nurse having to run and answer the phone or sit on the desk or something uh, not that we get a tremendous number of phone calls but we do you know we do pride ourselves on somebody picking up the phone when it's answered you know when it when it rings so there we've got one so I'm oh no looking at it selfishly I'm gonna have a half a nurse or uh, possibly one nurse but probably half a nurse for a lot of the time so I'm gonna be severely stressed because I'm gonna be under nursed and we're gonna be under understaffed and then the alternative then the second half of August, I'm going to be sitting at home, not able to do anything because I've got no nurses at all. And all of a sudden, receptionists are going to reappear <laughs> to a completely empty surgery with no patients, no dentists, and no nurses, and sit there for two weeks doing nothing. You know, and when you say that, they will say, oh, no, 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 I've got plenty of work to do. But what they don't, they don't. Basically what they mean is, oh, don't, don't, <laughs> oh, no, you've gotten on to my evil plan to spend two weeks sitting around filing my nails, and, and which I had done. I've gotten on to that. So I said to them, think again. And that is really, that's all I did was, all I had to do, you know, and Mr. Angry, telecratic, just say, look, uh, you know, okay, I see you've arrived at a solution. Personally, I don't think it, it's the best solution. It's not the optimal solution. Is it really working towards our objectives of uh, doing good quality 
dentistry making money and having fun and in particular the second objective <laughs> making money is it how is a shutdown in August for two weeks gonna help us in the objective of making money now now having said that I mean I'm not obviously trying to keep the surgery open at a time when it's impossible to keep it open but after about 15 minutes reconsideration they actually worked out that by that with the mainly the nurses um, swapping around a bit that uh, they can they can probably uh, keep us open in August and as I say I don't really mind that because I'm going to be away in September for a week and you know in hindsight closing the surgery the last two weeks in August and then having a week working and then me having another week off in in September is it's probably not the best utilisation of surgery resources, is it? So, you know, and their, their, their holidays weren't in set in stone. It's not like they booked holidays in Mallorca for those weeks. So they were able to be flexible. Fortunately, we caught it early enough. But if you're going to try this teleocratic style, and I recommend it because it does take such a burden off you, um, and funnily enough, it puts a bit, although it puts a burden on the staff, they do actually quite enjoy the responsibility, I think. You know, a lot of people's job satisfaction, a lot of it comes from the amount of responsibility they're given. And uh, you might see it as an onerous job. They see it as responsibility and trust, and it is. So, anyway, what's the moral of the story is plan, plan early. Don't worry too much about staff meetings if you're having a teleocratic management style. Don't try and explain teleocratic management to the Care Quality Commission. They will not understand. Just come up with some minutes of some staff meetings <laughs> and <laughs> that, that they can tick that they have seen and that they will then be happy with. The Care Quality Commission is not ready for teleocracy. Right. Yeah, so plan in advance, give you give your staff plenty of responsibility and then only step in if you sincerely think that uh, they've missed a trick, you know, that, that things could have been done organized slightly better. Right. I'm going to go and um, admit that I haven't had my hair cut because they're not not, you know, I told him I was going to go and get him a haircut and I was like, what did it? I was faffing about checking the Bitcoin prices. $1,750 a Bitcoin. I'd just like to look at it. All right. I'll, um, I'm going to go to work and so should you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.